some rowdy days actually like there was the day of in, uh, in Johnstone I, I, went, I, I could just feel Daniel freaking out that I was out in that gale morning I, could, I just knew that he was sweating that one but, and I, yeah I did something like 25 or 30 miles downwind to, to Humpkin Island I spent the night there um, and I was getting on towards the cold side by then uh, I was in my wetsuit because I, I thought there was a good probability I would go in um, and so I was suited up and ready for that. Um, and that was just a blazing fun downwinder. Oh my god. I mean, there were a couple of times I hit nine, ten knots. You know, with a loaded board, it's pretty fast. I could have done way faster if I was unloaded, but weight is the, is, it's all about weight, keeping the weight down, you know, which I did a pretty good job of. Uh, but given some more time and money to throw at it, you know, you could definitely could shave some pounds and, and bulk. Um, So how are you carrying food? I'm not carrying food. <laughs> During the day, basically all I'm eating are these chewable tablets about the size of a bottle cap and maybe twice as thick. Um, it's just three or four of those an hour long paddling. Like if I, if I just get that, that sensation of hunger, I eat one, you know, and it, turn, it, turn, it ends up being about three or four an hour. Uh, and I can, I can keep performing just doing that. I mean, if I was carrying food, which is no there's no way I could do it, you know. Um, so that's why I was pretty excited about the cheeseburger to eat some real food. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing any more or less miles than you expected to? Or um, I was hoping to do 60 a day, and I think I've been averaging around 50. Depending on conditions, you know, like that 70 mile day, that couldn't have been better, you know, for for pulling that many. Actually, it could have been better. The first 60 felt really good. It was the last 10 that were hard. Uh, the, uh, you know, across the street, it was just glass. I mean, I had glass for the first 50 miles. It was unbelievable. Just cut in glass, you know. It was just, just strip, breath, strip, breath, strip. It was just like the total in the zone, just pulling, you know. And I think I averaged five and a half knots that day. Uh, and then the last 20 miles just got real rowdy. You know, the hard part was in the end, you know. That was just, it was an insult for sure, the last 20. <laughs> yeah. But I got around there, the, the, the Cape just got really bumpy and lumpy. A couple boats came by and checked on me and asked if I needed anything. And what would that look like? Are you nuts? You know? Uh, but it was all going just fine. It was fine. You're mid fleet right now and you're well past a lot of the sailboats and the kayakers and that sort of thing. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, I knew, I knew it could happen, you know, I mean, that's part of the reason why I even did it on a stand-up, is that, um, like I said earlier, I think it's a more, a stand-up paddleboard is a more versatile boat, you know, or board or whatever you want to call watercraft, than even a kayak, you know, like, I mean, show me a kayak that can do 10 or 12 knots downwind, you know, right, it's not going to happen, um, or they can sustain five and a half knots, you know, I mean, I, I'm not surprised, you know. And I also, you know, when I first set my sights on doing the race by a stand-up paddleboard, um, it's not that I expect to win it. I, I certainly don't. I mean, I'm stoked just to finish it. You know, do everything just to accomplish that. 
but I do think that one day a paddler's gonna win this race. You get